Hello and welcome. Uh, I am Drew Guthrie, Chief Operating Officer of Foolproof. I'm here with Mike Sheffer, Director of Education of Foolproof. We're here to talk about critical thinking and really what that means and what that really means to kids as well. So let's just start off by defining critical thinking. Really simplistically, it is the objective analysis and evaluation to form a judgment. Pretty simple, right? But let's, let's talk about why that is so difficult. Did you know over $250 billion a year is spent on marketing in the US alone? Of that 250 billion, over 15 billion is aimed at kids. Marketing designed directly to, to target kids. So what we're talking about in critical thinking is everyone's trying to sell you something. So what do you do as a parent? What, what do you do? How do you protect yourself? That's what we're here to talk about. And I'd like to flip it over to Mike so he can give you a little introduction. Thanks, Drew. Uh, like Drew said, I'm Mike Sheffer, the Director of Education for the Foolproof Foundation. I'm a uh, retired teacher, 32 years in teaching personal finance economics in New York State and uh, the original Foolproof teacher. So we've seen a lot of it in the classroom, you know, with parents and, and with kids about their understanding of critical thinking and how to be a healthy skeptic and the things that I tried to bring to my classroom. And then, of course, as we started to develop foolproof was where, where's the process? So, for instance, you know, I grew up in a, in a, a lower middle class home that uh, money skills were discussed with my parents. So I learned a little bit from my parents going forward. I remember the envelope story as, as a young kid where my mom would put my dad's paycheck in each envelope and at the end envelope was one that had a smiley face on it and the smiley face was if there was any leftover money in that week we would go get ice cream i mean and that kind of stuck in my head as an educator and growing up and everything else and then as i started teaching personal finance skills to students through those years what the students would teach me and as we we go further into this you know presentation we're going to give you some skills that you're able to use with your kids and then how they can relate to see what they're being taught in school. And of course, the idea of how they can become critical thinkers and healthy skeptics, because in reality, they are being bombarded every single day to spend money or to, as we say, you know, think about where they would be if they had that product. And the one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're protecting you know, the kids, I'm a parent, I'm a former teacher, and now, you know, financial literacy person with Foolproof, you know, we're very um, in the process of trying to give you skills that you can use. Yeah. And, and you know, Mike, just my, my story that, that, you know, is, you know, when I graduated high school, you know, I, I had that, you know, end of high school mentality, thought I knew everything. So right when I got to college, I started signing up for every credit card offer I could get. I thought they were the foolish ones for giving an 18 year old thousands of dollars worth of credit. Yeah. Who is the fool on that one? Absolutely. So it, it's all about, you know, what, what, you know, and what you don't know, you don't know. So, and I think that that's really funny because, you know, my, my parents tried to instill some good financial habits in me, but frankly, they didn't have them growing up. So how are they supposed to teach me if they didn't know themselves? So it, it's an unfortunate situation that really leads to that uh, generational poverty and, and that cycle, that, that multi-generational poverty. So what we do at Foolproof is really look at what the, the base is. Because, you know, not to throw another stat at you, but according to one marketing research firm, kids have over $1 trillion of marketing influence over what they buy and what they par their parents buy every year, a trillion dollars. So there are marketers just constantly trying to get to those kids to help build that influence, you know, make it shiny, happy and like, hey, this is going to totally improve your life. But are they really selling that, you know, idealistic view? Yeah, in the process too, as you, as you look at it, you know, it's multi-generational because my parents didn't see it growing up like I saw it growing up. My children didn't see it growing up like I saw it growing up. And then of course, in the classroom, you have a tremendous amount of 
students that are coming from all over the aspect of what do they know about money? What have they been taught about money? What are their you know fears about money and all those different things? So if the school doesn't have the financial literacy requirement to graduate, which only a few states do, or they're not teaching a personal finance class, where are they getting this information? Here's a crazy stat. So I'm going to follow up with Drew's one. 64% of parents would rather talk to their kids about sex than money. Now, I have a son and a daughter. And I'm telling you, that talk about, hey, the birds and the bees kept me up for weeks on end. We talked about money all the time because their dad taught money. And I, you know, I was a school teacher and there wasn't a ton of money. And it was just all these different things. And if you go back and you talk to my kids, they would say they would remember, you know, certain meals on certain weeks, but they always remembered on payday as a teacher every second week, we would go out and have pizza. And it was, I took that same thing from my parents with the envelopes to take care of all the things that I wanted. When there was a little bit left, we would be able to go do those things. So the idea is that there are so many things that we can pass on to our children in the process of teaching them about making a, a good, healthy, critical thought and being a healthy skeptic is going through it. Yeah, and, and there are so many habits that that parents can start to build in their their kids, and, it, and it's all about what works best for you. So if Mike's envelope strategy works, fantastic. The, but there are a bunch of other things that you can start off doing to to give your kids that sense of ownership. Is first of all, read the fine print. You know, get your kids to start thinking about that fine print. Okay, this is an ad that's selling all the great things. Well, what does what do their lawyers make them say? You know, what is the difference between what's in the big bold print, the shiny ad versus what the actual reality is? Getting kids to start realizing what the actual truth is in the advertising in that fine print is a tremendous first step. But there the biggest part is don't be afraid to ask questions. Not not only for yourself for your kids, but to anyone who's trying to market to you, trying to sell you a product or service, there's no such thing as bad question. So many people that we work with get hung up on the fact of, oh, I don't want to, you know, act like a fool uh, to in front of someone who in, in front of a banker or someone trying to sell me a car. Uh, you know, oh, this is probably a stupid question. There, there's none of that. This is all about you, your lifestyle and your welfare. So don't. Don't think about any taboo topics. There are no taboo questions. Do your research in advance before you get into a situation where someone's trying to sell you something. But Mike, do, do you have any other habits that, that would be helpful? Well, it's funny because in the classroom, when, you, when you're dealing about money skills and you're going through the process of, again, kids are coming in, coming in with predetermined ideas or no ideas, or they're scared to death or they're enthusiastic. I was very lucky to be able to teach money skills every single day, because I always believed it was about them. That was the key part of it. And uh, students will grab onto that. Kids will grab onto that because they're trying to look at themselves. And this is a this is a really good time in their life to actually be selfish and take a look at the process of this is going to be my life. A couple of things that we did in the classroom that you can do with your with your with your kids at home too is do a spending journal. Take a one week spending journal and just have them write down every single thing that they spent. We started to see trends and the trends are they're buying a lot of stuff if they're driving at the convenience store or the gas station and they're going in, they're buying the crackers, they're buying the soda, they're buying a the water. And then what I tell the kids is, listen, this is how much you've spent on this. This is your hard earned money. And then there's other ways to do it. You know, can you go to the grocery store and buy it in bulk? Now, are your parents a member of one of the big clubs where they can get the crackers that are about 27 cents each a pack instead of $2? And it's funny, when I walk into the store and I travel a lot for foolproof and I'm on the road and I'll stop and get a coffee, I say to myself, man, I should have got that coffee coming out of the hotel because it's free or I have crackers in my bag. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that we just take forward as we go. 
And the other thing is create shopping lists for your kids. You know, at a younger age, they start forming money skills around the se- the age of seven. So when you have them make out the shopping list for you, have them look at unit pricing, have them look at the process of what it's going to cost. All those different things kind of go into the idea. But it, it really is be open to discussion. It is multi-generational. If you're a parent watching this, talk to your parents. They don't see it the way you do. They may look at how you spend money and they may their head may spin. I look at my 28 and 25-year-old. I've got a 28-year-old that sometimes I look at him and go, thank God you don't ask me for anything because I'd be like, oh my God, I can't even do the things you do. As compared to a 25-year-old, our daughter is so conservative, we have to kind of, it's okay to be in the economic system. You know, those types of things. So every kid's different, you know. So as a parent, you have different personalities in your children. Of course, as an educator, you're coming in with 25 or 35 different personalities at all the times. Well, you know, it's getting back to your story example, Mike. You know, why don't that sense of ownership is so important to kids. It helps build them that confidence to make those critical thinking decisions when they don't have a parent or an adult helping them through that process. So that sense of ownership is really important. You know, relating back to my stat of over a trillion dollars of influence that kids have, why don't you leverage that? Why don't we leverage that as a society and get them involved in that thought process? So, you know, they'll, they'll have influences from any kind of marketing, TV, social media that they that they might be on. But as an adult, you can go in there and say, okay, how does that affect you as a person? Are they trying to sell you some idealistic viewpoint or some lifestyle that doesn't fit into you personally? If we can start instilling those critical thinking elements into kids early, they start building that confidence. And all of a sudden that becomes a habit where they're faced with some kind of marketing material and they'll say like, okay, wow, this sounds really cool. But wait a second, that free phone requires me to sign up for a couple years worth of a a plan that'll cost thousands of dollars. Is that phone really free? I mean, just just simple things like that. Being able to leverage their influence not only gives them the, that sense of ownership, it helps them grow up and, and have that, uh, pardon the term, but adulting. It, what does it feel like to be an adult? Have them help pay the bills. Show what the actual time value of a dollar is. You know, one, one of the greatest lessons, one of my favorite lessons in Foolproof is actually looking at a fee. You know, you get a charge a $10 bank fee or $3 from an ATM, something like that. How long does it take you to earn enough money to take home that amount? So that we're not talking gross pay, we're talking net pay. So how long does it take you? And so translating real dollars into time and effort being able to spend at a job or doing chores around the house, any type of way to earn income, that relates it right back to that time value of money that is so important to kids because as they get older, they're going to start realizing the value of time that they have, that time is a commodity as well. And it will give them those tools to build those habits, to be able to, to move forward and be able to have those critical thinking skills and make right decisions for their, their part in life. But do you, do you have any other ideas for habits that, that you can help those kids build, Mike? Yeah, I, I think as a parent and even as an educator, you really want an independent resource. I mean, it's really important that, you know, if you do a Google search and you look at the difference between renting your, or leasing a car and buying a car and you go ahead and punch that in, the first six you're going to get for probably leasing, the next six you're going to get for, for you know, financing your car, you know, or, or using a credit union or a bank. They're all they all have their agenda. So the one thing you really want is you want that independent resource. Don't be that 64 percent of the parents that don't want to talk to their kids about money. If we all have those conversations and the the nice thing, too, is when your child comes back to you from school and if they take a personal finance class or they're taking a business class or economics and they want to come back and talk to you about it. If you're not sure what they're talking about, because, hey, we're never really sure what they're talking about, go feel good about going in and looking it up. Go to foolproofme.org or go somewhere to get the information so you can have that conversation. That's the key. 
my daughter just went out and bought her second car and she graduated from college early and we helped her buy the first one. And of course, you know, she's got a great job, but she didn't have a lot of credit. So we had to go through the whole thing. And I said, you're a finance major. You're a foolproof kid. And she goes, I know, Dad, my credit, though, isn't high enough because I don't have any. So we had to go through and look at how to build her credit together. And that, to me, fantastic. I had a great time. And I didn't have to sign. <laughs> so the idea is that, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, as a parent, not everything is, you know, teaching a lot of it's, but as you start developing money skills with your children, you become more of an advisor, which is really cool. That That's great, Mike. And yeah, it's all about those independent resources. You know, obviously we'll, we love foolproofme.org, but also look for other sites out there. Uh, look for, you know, places that have sponsored content where an advertiser is actually paying for an article to, to be published. That's a big red flag there. So look at look for those little cues out there to be able to make sure that you are truly giving independent research. And hey, here's to being a healthy skeptic. <laughs>